What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. JL Audio Subwoofer Review. You guys have been asking for years, here we go. So, this is the E110 model. Now, JL Audio doesn't send subwoofers to YouTube reviewers, so I bought this bad boy with my own money. With that being said, I bought it on the used market, but I wanted to make sure what I reviewed today, what I told you guys about the subwoofer would be current. So I got a hold of JL Audio. I told them what I was doing, that I was gonna review this model on YouTube. And I asked them like, hey, you know, this being a few years old, can I send it to you guys? And if there's any parts that are, you know, have been updated and stuff like that, just give it a refresh for me. And they were like, yeah, cool, no problem, we got you. So I thought that was super cool. And I just wanted to give them a shout out for being a team player like that. So this model, despite this color being discontinued now, all its internals, its guts, its design is identical to a brand new unit you would buy at a dealer showroom today. So with that said, let's throw the main specs on screen so you guys could check that out. I'll tell you about some standout features. I'll tell you what it sounds like. Uh, we'll do some comparisons and then we'll wrap it up. So. Standout features, there's a, there's a few wild ones here, guys. Uh, but the first, I wanna talk about the aesthetics that I think are pretty cool. Got a little bit of a beveled edge on the sides, gives it a unique look. Then there's this bezel that goes around. It's, you know, the same color as the rest of the subwoofer, and it gives this nice, just kind of, it's bezel, you know, it's just a bezel, I guess you could say, but it, it's, it's cool, it's a little design touch. Now, this black piece you see, which is normally just the front part of the cabinet, the baffle, if you will, is not what you think it is. As you can see in that picture, it is a part of the basket. This is cast into the basket. It's a single piece. So if you're the kind of customer that wants rock solid build quality and rigidity in your subwoofer, uh, this has it, guys. Uh, moving on to the back, if you look, the plate amplifier has its own sealed off section. So it's gonna be a little bit better protected from heat and vibration that's produced from the driver. Likewise, the driver has its own enclosure as well. And you can see it takes up damn near the whole thing. This is a very long stroke design. There's two spires, a huge motor section. This thing is built like a freaking tank, ladies and gentlemen. So another standout feature is gonna be the top mounted controls. I think those are pretty cool. They have a nice little cover that goes over them and you can adjust phase and polarity independently. So that's all cool and stuff. And yeah, it's got like 1200 watts RMS, which is a hell of a lot of power and a nice compact enclosure and it looks good. And how does it sound though, right? Cause like those are all cool things, but like if it doesn't sound any good, who cares, right? Well, I'm happy to report it sounds pretty amazing. Um, it does some things differently. It's got some unique characteristics and those are the things I wanna talk about before we get into the comparison. So let's be clear about one thing first. With the other parts of the frequency spectrum, mid-range, top end and treble and things like that, we all know and agree that there's different sounds and those different sounds don't make a product better or worse, right? We know if uh, someone likes clarity, a lot of clarity and detail retrieval, they will appreciate a speaker like Focal. But at the same time, if someone doesn't like an analytical presentation or a cool mid-range, well, then they will not like Focal. Neither situation makes Focal a good or a bad speaker. It's just if it's right for you based on your taste. Same with mid-range. Some people like a warm, luscious, juicy mid-range. That doesn't mean a speaker with a lean and cool mid-range is bad. It's just not suited to their taste. And it's the same with bass. There's different kinds of bass performance and presentation. And if a subwoofer does one thing and not another, that doesn't make it good or bad. It just helps you decide if it's for you or not. So stay with me, because this bad boy does some things in an incredible way that I think a lot of people are gonna like. And it might do some things that some people may not like, like all subwoofers, right? And I say this because what I'm about to talk about is SQ subwoofers and SPL subwoofers. And I think because SQ sounds better than SPL, a lot of people think SPL means bad. No, SPL just means sound pressure level. An SPL subwoofer is one that can play incredibly loud, have a dominant amount of extension, attack, and authority, and all of those things. Most subwoofers are actually SPL subwoofers. Most people enjoy SPL subwoofers quite a bit, but there's a slight difference in the way they deliver bass compared to an SQ-focused design, and we're gonna talk about that. So, the bass coming from the JL Audio E110 is gonna be a little bit heavier tonally. You're gonna feel that weight and slam hit your body as this subwoofer pressurizes the room. If you're the kind of person that likes bass that is a little bit in your face, Bass that is 
strong and impactful attack from a small cabinet, you're gonna like this thing a lot. Another cool thing is its start-stop behavior is incredible. Most SPL subwoofers don't have the best start-stop behavior. Not this guy, holy crap. When this thing is called upon to produce bass, it does so with authority and immediacy. And when it's called upon to stop, it does so with immediacy. That really surprised me. Next, let's talk about, um, you know, like the note to note distinction, right? This is another area where generally SPL subwoofers aren't the best. They don't have the best note to note distinction. They can usually hit like a hammer, but when the bass frequencies change, it's, it's not super obvious. It more sounds like a volume change. Not here. The JL Audio E110 has really good bass articulation, even in the higher frequencies up to 80 hertz. In fact, I used this during some of my listening impressions when I was reviewing the Arendelle 1961 bookshelf speaker, and that's a small sealed speaker that only goes down to about 75 hertz, so I had to cross this subwoofer as high as 80 hertz to blend with that speaker. It blended and integrated very well. Let me talk about a bass being in your face and drawing your attention. So there's two scenarios under which bass will draw your attention. Either the subwoofer doesn't integrate well, and that can happen sometimes. There are subwoofers that just don't integrate all that well. This integrates very well, so that's, uh, there's no issue there. The other time bass will draw your attention is when its leading edge and its attack is very strong, forceful, and impactful. Then, of course, it's becoming dominant. Your brain will notice it. So if you're the kind of audiophile that likes, likes your bass to be more of an enhancement of your music, right? A natural extension of your speakers without any exaggeration whatsoever, there are other subwoofers you can buy that are more SQ focused to that task. That is not what JL Audio is trying to accomplish here. JL Audio is trying to kick you in your chest as hard as humanly possible from a small cabinet and a good looking one at that. It is dominant with its presentation. It is forceful with its presentation. It is impactful. The bass is both tactile, deep, powerful, and extremely well controlled. This is a combination of characteristics you usually don't find in an SPL focused design. And for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and say JL Audio is like, they're the kings of SPL focused designs because they do all the things an SPL focused subwoofer should do, that kick in the chest bass, that strong extension, control at the limit, at the limit you know, dominant attack, but it's not monotone by any means. It has good note to note distinction. Um, it has good transient response. It has good speed. Um, it's not gonna handle delicate passages as well as an SQ subwoofer. That's okay. Um, but it, I mean, <laughs> if you came over guys and you heard this and I had a bigger subwoofer next to it, you'd have a hard time determining which one was playing. Because the way the bass attacks, right, the immediacy that it kicks with is very strong. It is very forceful. And I think it's the type of bass a lot of people are looking for. I think it's the type of bass a lot of people like. Um, it's absolutely going to be killer in a home theater environment if you don't want big subs. Um, JL Audio is known, um, and you can look this up, um, for the, like if you look at their CEA data, for the cabinet size, JL Audio generally has the most output, generally. There are subwoofers with more output, but usually they're quite a bit larger with respect to their cabinets. So I hope I've given you a clear understanding of what it sounds like. Basically, let me say it in a nutshell. All the things SQ subwoofers can do, the JL Audio E110 is pretty good at. It's not as good as its SQ counterparts, but it is among the best I have heard from an SPL focused subwoofer. Where it's gonna be different from an SQ focus subwoofer is gonna be in the delivery of the bass. An SQ subwoofer is more gonna be an enhancement to your music where a JL Audio E110 being an SPL subwoofer, it will enhance your music as well. And it's also gonna have such strong authority and attack that you will naturally notice the bass portion of the presentation. You're not gonna be drawn to the subwoofer let me be clear, your attention will not be like, ooh, subwoofer, right? Your attention will be simply drawn to the bass, right? A lot of people like that. I, I don't mind it, if I'm being completely honest. I don't, and I'm an SQ customer generally, but I don't mind this presentation at all because it's, 
the start-stop behavior, good note-to-note -note distinction, extreme control, it's a good match for some speakers, let me tell you. Uh, so, I recently got the Focal Canta. That's a very expensive speaker. It's $8,000 MSRP a pair. And its attack is strong. Its treble is sharp. Its mid-range clarity is insane. Its delivery from top to bottom is strong with its leading edges. My SQ subwoofer sounded fantastic with it, don't get me wrong. The REL pair I have here sounded amazing. The rhythmic subwoofers here I have sound amazing. But I plugged in the JL Audio E110 just out of pure curiosity, because I was like, you know what, this is still a $2,000 subwoofer, like it should blend still. Like it should pair well with the Cantas. I thought it would stick out like a sore thumb um, with its attack and delivery, but here's the funny thing. The Focal Canta number one, its attack is strong. Its leading edges are extremely well defined, as is the bass from the JL Audio E110. I found the JL Audio E110 to be one of the better matches with the Focal Canta number one I have here. So let's talk about comparisons. Um, let's talk about the JL Audio E110 versus something almost the same price, KEF KF92. So KEF KF92 is a little bit of a different design. It's a similar size. Um, you know, both are, I would say, compact subwoofers. The KF92 is just a little bit smaller. Um, the KF92 only comes in black. This only comes in black. With the primary difference is this having a matte option, whereas the KF92 only comes in gloss. So if you need a matte finish because you've got a projector screen or something like that, you're just gonna go with the JL instead of the KEF KF92, right? Anyhow, I digress. The KEF KF92 has one killer party trick where at lower volumes, it can belt out more extension than any other subwoofer its size, period. However, as you start to demand more volume from it, things start to change. It'll slightly roll off that bass and it'll still, still play quite loud. Nowhere near as loud as the JL Audio E110. That is where the JL Audio E110 takes the edge by a long shot. Again, as I said previously, generally speaking, JL Audio subwoofers can play much louder than other subwoofers similar in size, regardless of price. As far as the presentation goes, overall, the JL Audio, JL Audio E110 is gonna have a stronger leading edge, better defined note-to-note -note distinction than the KEF KF92. The KF92 is not bad in those areas at all. The JL E110 just had clearer note-to-note -note distinction and a much stronger attack to its presentation. Um, let's talk about another comparison. Let's see here. Let's do just a stark contrast, right? JL Audio E110 versus something like a REL T9X. There is a price difference here of about $500. The REL T9X is like $1,500. The, the JL Audio E110 is about $2,000. REL, REL T9X all the way on the SQ side, JL E110 all the way on the SPL side. This would be the same as if I was comparing a really, really bright and sharp speaker to one that is really, really smooth and rolled off. It's unlikely one customer would be cross-shopping both brands. But with speakers, we have those distinctions. Everyone talks about them. Everyone knows there is such a thing as a bright speaker and a dark speaker. But with bass, for some reason, those differences are less known. So let me clarify it for you. Both subwoofers are gonna have phenomenal bass, phenomenal. Both brands make really, really good subwoofers. The way they deliver that bass is extremely different. REL is really gonna focus on handling of delicate passages, bass texture, fidelity, detail. The REL T9X is gonna dig out every little bit of bass detail from that presentation, and you are without a doubt gonna hear things in the bass region you have never heard before. It's gonna extend fairly low and play fairly loud. The JL Audio E110, on the other hand, is going to extend much lower and it's going to play much louder. It's going to still have good bass detail, but it's not going to be able to match the REL T9X for its detail or its tone and texture, right? The bass from the REL T9X, I guess we could say, is a little bit on the warm side. It's juicy, it's textured, it's romantic. The JL Audio E110, we could say the bass is a little bit more technical, a little bit more analytical with its sharp leading edges and such. So. The sounds are wildly different. One subwoofer is not better than the other in this comparison at all. They are simply polar opposites. It's like if you were comparing a sports car to a luxury car, for example, you wouldn't cross shop the two. Like no one's in the market for a Ford Mustang GT and a Lexus at the same time. You're just not. You want the sports car or you want the luxury car. You want the SPL subwoofer or you want the SQ subwoofer. 
Anyhow, um, the cool thing about both brands actually is they're, they're, they're both so, sold through dealers. So you should be able to get a dealer demo uh, of either subwoofer in your area as long as you live in a major city. And if you're in the market, I highly encourage that, guys. These YouTube videos I make, these are just to help you out. But they shouldn't, you know, if you can help it, they shouldn't be the end all be all. If you have the opportunity to hear the thing I'm talking about and you're seriously in the market, hear the damn thing, guys. Because until you hear these things, sometimes it's really hard to know which kind of customer you are, right? Like myself, for example. When it comes to cars, like, I don't like cars that are that comfortable. I just don't. It's a weird thing. Something like a Mercedes S-Class. That's a flagship luxury sedan. I don't like it. It's just like so cush and comfortable and like it doesn't feel like you're driving. It just feels like you're floating from destination to destination. And that's what people love about the S-Class. But that's what I dislike. I much prefer a more rigid ride, something more connected where you're more connected to the driving experience and the road with a little bit more feedback. I don't mind a little bit of road noise coming through the cabin. I don't mind a little bit of vibration coming through that steering wheel. Mercedes doesn't have any of that, and that's why I don't like the S-Class. Does it make it a bad car? Not at all. It's just not for me. Anyhow, I digress. Um, let's talk about this versus something again similar in price, the Rhythmic E15. This is an odd one because Rhythmic is manufactured direct. You get a little more bang for your buck. For less money, you get a 15-inch subwoofer. Um, so there's that, right? But again, like REL, Rhythmic is on the SQ side. However, it still has pretty strong extension and output, so let's jump into it. Both subwoofers are going to play incredibly loud. Both subwoofers are going to extend incredibly low. The Rhythmic being a 15-inch will extend even lower. No surprise there. Rhythmic has servo technology that helps it start and stop on an absolute dime. The JL Audio E110 also starts and stops on a dime. Instead of using servo technology, it just has an insanely huge motor section with an extremely high BL, most likely. So both subwoofers start and stop on a dime. Cool. Both subwoofers can play loud and extend low. The larger Rhythmic can extend lower. Cool. Rhythmic can handle tonal textures much better. Uh, it's a much warmer sounding subwoofer. It's gonna have even better bass articulation than the JL Audio E110. Because remember, the E110 has decent bass articulation. Rhythmic's gonna take that to another level. I hate to say it, but this is a scenario where going manufacturer direct and going for the Rhythmic E15 is gonna get you something that's gonna give you a whole lot better sound quality, extension, uh, maximum SPL, I would imagine, also being a 15 with similar power. The HP2 model has 900 watts RMS. This has 1,200. That's not a huge difference. Now, Rhythmic is only available in the U.S., so it's not going to be available to everyone. But do keep in mind, while it does sound like you're going to get more going manufacturer direct with Rhythmic, do keep in mind, taste is a big factor here because the Rhythmic is an SQ subwoofer. It's an SQ subwoofer that can play loud and extend low, but still an SQ subwoofer with that bass that's going to enhance the music, right? If that's not what you're in the market for, you might prefer this, right? But if that's are what you're in the market for, E15 HB2 is one of my favorite subwoofers. I actually love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Anyhow. So... I don't think there's too many. You know what? Let's let's do one more comparison. Let's compare the JL E110 to the most popular brand of SPL subwoofers, SVS. Let's compare this to. Um, I guess we can compare it to either SB2000 Pro or SB3000. They're similar enough in price and size, so we'll just compare it to both of them. So, SVS gives you a lot of what I'm describing here, but it's about half the price and the performance scales accordingly, if that makes sense. Everything I said, the JL E110 can do, SVS subwoofers could do at a lower level, and they are about half the price, so no surprise there. SVS subwoofers, not gonna, uh, you know, SB2000 Pro and SB3000, they're not gonna have the start-stop behavior as this subwoofer being double the price, right? They're not gonna have the extension that this has, or that just dominant ability to play so much louder. This has so much more power, you know what I mean? Like the SB3000 is 800 watts RMS. This is uh, 1200. It is quite impressive what JL Audio has been able to do. So I would actually even say, if you're an SVS customer and you've fallen into more money and you, you like the sound of SVS, you're looking for just more of everything, um, JL Audio, I believe, is kind of the natural upgrade path from SVS. 
they, they make subwoofers that are similar in kind of like concept, but JL Audio just like kicks it up a whole hell of another notch, right? You know, it's like if you like the Mazda Miata as a sports car and you fall into some money, your next natural evolution might be something like a Porsche 911 or a Cayman GTS, right? It's, it's a serious step up, but from a design standpoint, it's, it's a similar evolution, right? It makes sense. Anyhow, I think that's about as much as I want to tell you about the subwoofer. I don't think there's much else I can say. I hope to God I have given you enough context to understand what I'm saying. It is a little bit challenging to get into this like whole SQ and SPL thing because a lot of people, they hear the word SQ and they just think it's immediately better because it stands for sound quality. But SPL simply means sound pressure level. So I just, I just hope no one in the comments is confused. If, if you're confused, guys, keep it to yourself. Please, please, please. I don't, I don't think I can handle it. I put a ton of effort into trying to make the sound clear. I've refilmed this probably like 30 times. So that is going to wrap it up. This channel does have a free Discord. Uh, link is in the description. If you have any questions, ask in the comments below. Unless those questions are you being confused, then I do not want to hear about it for this one time. I just don't want to hear about it. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time. Later.